Welcome to the wonderful world of ants. From the forest of South America to the south of the United States, you're about to witness something special. Thousands of ants marching, each carrying leaves often larger than themselves. Ants belonging to the genus of Atta are exceptional. They are called leafcutter ants. They farm a fungus in order to eat it and use it as their growing house. Researchers estimate that some ants turned fungus farmers about 66 million years ago, after a catastrophe that limited outdoor resources. The ancestors of Atta survived by adapting. Today, they fully depend on the mushroom to survive. But more interestingly, the mushroom depends on the ants to survive too. The fungus lost the ability to create spores. Without ants to spread it across the continent, the fungus would probably disappear in a matter of years. Ants and fungus have a symbiotic relationship is what we call mutualism, meaning that both parts benefit from this relationship. It's a good strategy as both species have been spreading for millions of years. Let's go back to our ant parade. Here they form an unbroken chain marching back to their nest. Their main objective is to collect leaves. But not just any leaves. These ants are connoisseurs. They seek out only the freshest and most succulent foliage. Their teamwork is inspiring. This ant here belongs to the Ata Mexicana species. She uses her mandibles to pierce the leaf. Then she cuts it, turning around the piercing point like a drawing compass. This move is particularly clear here with this Acromyrmix ant, the Atta's cousin. Thanks to a certain configuration of zinc atoms, mandibles have the same cutting power as a surgeon's scalpel. Over time, the blades become dull and old ants cut two times slower than young ants. In the big colonies, they are quickly put in charge of transporting the leaves rather than cutting them. We could have imagined that over millions of years of evolution, their mandibles would have found a way to become stronger or get replaced over time, like sharks' teeth, for example. But ants are different. They have solved this problem with a well-planned social organization. The atas are not just using leaves, but any parts of the tree or the bush they prefer. This atta mexicana carries a piece of stem. She will divide it into smaller pieces and will bring it to the nest. Her sister here is enjoying a free ride. This other ant takes a well-deserved break. She's cleaning her antennas, a behavior often observed in ants. They do it more than a hundred times a day. Ants fold their legs to create a hairy hook. The hair on the hook acts as an antenna brush. Some hairs are soft, others are thick. They are used to clean different types of particles like dirt, pollen or sand. When the leaves are finally cut in small pieces, the workers bring them to the nest. Here this Atta sextans ant is doing just that. In their natural habitat, the ants with the precious leaves stay as much as possible in the middle lane. The others, with empty mandibles, are on the side, forming a cordon of protection. The Atta's cousins, the Acromyrmix ants, are here for cultivating the fungus garden. Like Atta ants, they chew leaves to create an ideal substrate for the mushroom to grow. These Atta cephalotis are taking their time to farm properly. This mushroom is very important to the species, as it is the only food for members of the colony that stay in the nest. The taste of Atta ants evolves through time. To prevent the possible eradication of a specific tree, they are able to change their shopping list. Another strategy developed by leafcutter ants is to forage only in a single direction. The next year, Atta ants would choose a different direction. This approach allows the forests to regenerate over time. The fact remains that leafcutter ants can strip a tree from its leaves within a day. They harvest so intensively that Atta ants are considered responsible for the degradation of one quarter of all leaves in Central and South America. Some ant species like Ecophila are used to prevent human farms from being invaded by harmful insects. Atta ant species are certainly not among those. They are a nightmare for many South American farmers. They are considered pests and killed on sight if they settle too close to a plantation. Despite the reality of the damage they can inflict on human agriculture, 
Workers of the genus Atta or Acromyrmix carry almost no bacteria we should be concerned about. They actually possess one of the strongest antibiotics in nature. You can observe it easily as a white powder on their exoskeleton. The pharmaceutical industry studies them to lift the mystery of their million years old antibiotics. Deep within the nest, we find the fungus gardens, a labyrinth of chambers. The ants meticulously tend to their crops, ensuring the right humidity, temperature and pH value. They weed out any unwanted molds or pests. It's a delicate balance between nurturing and protection. The fungus is everywhere. Ants can literally eat on their commute. In the gardens, time seems suspended. The rhythm of life is calmer than outdoors. As the fungus blooms, the ants feast on its nutritious mycelium, which the colony needs. Let's come back to the Atta's cousins. They are using leaves or petals. These Acromyrmix are very similar to Atta, but with a big difference. They don't show any polymorphism. That means the workers are all the same size. Here's a comparison with Atta Mexicana. But which workers are we talking about? Atta workers come in between 10 and 20 different shapes, and each of them play a specific role. Let's group them in a few main categories. Gardener ants are the smallest workers. We call them minims, but they can be from the cast of the miners too. They work in the gardens and the nursery, their size allowing them to squeeze into narrow spaces. But ants don't keep the same job forever. When the time comes, minims take on a new duty. While media ants are carrying the leaves, minims or miners clean them to prevent any parasites from entering the colony. These miners here use the antenna cleaning brake of a media ant to inspect the leaves. The media are ants with many talents. They cut, carry, defend or forage. Across their lifetime, just like the minims, they can switch from one function to another. They are the pillars of the community and they execute the most noticeable tasks. These ants from Atta Mexicana species have a distinctive exoskeleton. They exhibit spikes and rigid hairs in order to discourage predators from messing with them. The majors are workers specialized in the nest defense. They are massive in comparison to the other workers. In absence of a threat, they can help by carrying big leaves and twigs. Look at these workers from Atta Sextens species. They are all working together to ensure the work gets done. This colossal Atta queen is one of the biggest ants in the Antum. She is a lot bigger than the other ants in her colony. Just her head can be bigger than the body of an entire minim. How does a queen decide to lay workers of different sizes? When laying eggs, the queen decides the sex of an ant. But the cast is determined by food and care variations given by nurses during the larva stage. The ants are meticulously sorting through their harvest. This series of small mounds surrounding the nest entrance are waste piles. The rejected leaves are stacked here, forming a protective barrier against pathogens and pests. For the exact same reason, they also separate the dead from the living, placing here the corpses of their fallen comrades to avoid contamination. Ants also use their garbage to deal with temperature, air quality and climate. In nature, nothing is created, nothing is lost, everything changes. This famous saying by Lavoisier is also true for ant colonies. Before leaving their birth colony, allate females store in their mouth a tiny part of the mushroom. After mating, she survives by eating some of the first eggs, and she will start to grow the fungus using her fecal matter. Eventually, the colony would be as deep in the ground as a human house is tall. The mushroom is given from one generation to another, and could be the exact same mushroom that their ancestors have started to cultivate millions of years ago. Leafcutters are known in South America for the rapid defoliation of trees. As a snack, they are appreciated in Brazil and Mexico for their taste. But they lack the recognition as creators. In fact, their abandoned nests allow the roots of plants to grow easily through the empty tunnels. They are an essential cog in the wheel of forest biodiversity. So, next time you spot a leafcutter ant, remember, behind that tiny creature lies a world of different skills, cooperation and survival.